The second group that we're practicing is going to have a lot of overturn arches and the N is going to be the first one. You make one arch and then followed by a compound curve. Start with a light up stroke at the baseline. Come up to the waistline curve, then come heavier down, square off that down stroke of the first leg and then the compound curve and remember to curve all the way up to the waistline. This one isn't looking too great. The angles of the, the, the tops aren't very round, so let's try that again. We're curving, light up, heavy down and light up. The M is two overturn arches and a compound curve. We have the first one here. And for the second one, you might be tempted to start at the top of the curve there, but I'm going to encourage you to really start at the baseline again and build that arch the way that you build all the arches, even if that means you are going over the first stroke again. So light up, curve heavy down. And I have to keep getting some ink in here and light up, curve heavy down, square off, and light up, heavy down, light up in that compound. What we want to see in the M's and the N's as well is that a little triangle of space of breathing room which makes copper plate so elegant. This is where we can really see the contrast between the thick and the thin lines. The V is a compound curve starting at the base, curving up, heavy down, round, light up again. And the third of the X height space uh, underturn arch that we already know from the W. I'm not, I'm not liking this one because the space between and inside the letter isn't even. So we're going to try that again and really paying attention to the compound curve and making sure that I have all the right angles, that it's round, that the pressure is at the right pace, places. And that's better. Feel free to adjust your paper whenever you feel like you're straining your wrists. Now the P has the in stroke and then a dynamic stem, which means we start pointy at the top and then increase our pressure and then follow up with the compound curve. And the little peculiarity of the P here is that I start the dynamic stem just above the waistline. So it overshoots the waistline a little bit and then the lower half of the stem does not quite reach the descender line. So we're shifting that stem up a little bit and that helps with proportion and it helps with, um, with weight. So there's not too much, too much uh, ink on the page for one specific letter. So we're doing it again, the in stroke, the dynamic stem scooched up just a tad above the waistline and then the compound curve to make the bowl. Nowadays we would use a bowl, but again, this is, you know, traditional copper plate rules it's um, it's a compound curve. And the R, we're actually going to see a couple of R's. This is one version. I think it's uh, called the English version and we'll have a French version later. So this is an overturn arch and then a little wave at the top. And again, we're looking for clean transitions from thick to thin lines to have those graceful little triangles of space.